Hey everybody, how you doing today? I hope you've enjoyed the first two episodes with Matt. They, I had a lot of fun. Hopefully you did too. Absolutely. So Matt, uh, topic number three is a uh, something near and dear to both our hearts. You want to kind of introduce what this concept is. This is again, you know, the young folks making money in uh, hot stocks, if you uh, if you remember. So why don't you lay it out? We'll have a conversation. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, I I I uh, I had my time in stocks. You know, I think we've all had our time in stocks. <clears throat> and it was usually when the, for us, it was the talk around the morning conference room table in the late nineties when everyone was talking about Cisco. Yeah. That was the one that got me. Yep. Yep. That's the one that got, that's one of the ones that got me. Mm -hmm. um, there was, and so I think that it's good that people are looking at and understanding what the market is and how it works and how it operates, but day trading isn't investing. Day trading is gambling. <clears throat> and the old adage of gambling is true, which is Vegas wasn't built by a bunch of winners. Yeah. You know, it yeah. was built by people that lose out. And so the only thing that I would say is the cautionary tale, do your homework, do your research. The sad thing is, is that that's not even saving the best of the best in the business who pay tens of millions of dollars for research on yeah. any company that they're looking at. You know, they're accessing all of these different data inputs. And at the end of the day, as sophisticated as you may be, congratulations, you can get Wall Street. And you did. You got them. You got them on GameStop. You did. However, if you look at the flows now, almost every hedge fund on Wall Street has repaired the losses that they had on GameStop. Mm -hmm. And now they're making even more money on it. Yeah. So they're already net positive, And this is in less than three weeks. Yeah. I guess there's a couple, because again, I have a well-documented story, right? Turn seven into 197, back to 40. Sure. Um, and, and I guess I have a couple of things I want to point out. First and foremost, don't ever be as arrogant as I was. I, at one point, remember vividly thinking I was smarter than Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, I mean, this was 25 years ago or whatever it was. Warren Buffett reads eight to 10 hours a day balance sheets and earning statements. There was no way that some idiotic kid, which I'm calling myself that, who has three seconds of time to read, will be able to pick stocks that beat Warren Buffett. Sure. But I had a hot hand. I had a streak at the craps table or blackjack table, and it went on for months. I could do no wrong. I thought it was me. It wasn't. It was the market. Sure. Sure. And then when it turns, you do a couple of things. You could be like these idiots out there talking about diamond hands today, right? You're going to hold on to something that is, you know, the book value is five and you're going to hold it at 200. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're, it's dead money. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to, you're going to, you're going to scream winner, winner, winner on the way up. And then you're going to point at everybody else. They did that. They did this. They did that. You're not going to take ownership. Mm -hmm. The last thing is, this is America. You are free to do whatever the hell you want as long as you're willing to pay the consequences. That's but what, right. I, what I mean by that is if you're going to be an investor, be an investor. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a speculator, speculate. And if you're going to gamble, gamble. Mm -hmm. Those three things are very different. Don't you dare call yourself an investor, which I did when all I was doing was gambling. Absolutely. I don't begrudge anybody for gambling. Shit. If you were one of the people that turned 10 grand into a million bucks with GameStop, I hope you sold. Yeah. And I will, uh, I will applaud you. But yeah, those, those are kind of, and I was warning people for that whole week it was running up. And like on Friday, I'm like, dude, this can't last next week. This is wall street's going to get you. That's right. And that's they right. did. They did. I mean, that's what these guys, these guys are reading reports and, and, they have algorithms that are looking at social media pages, gauging at activity, talking about that, you know, so, and I can appreciate that everybody likes the scratch ticket and it coming in at 10,000 bucks off of $5, but that's really what that is. Yeah. That's what that is. You know, we all have our losses. I lost on Cisco. I, ECNC was an awesome story, which all the guys in the office were talking about it. It was a technology office. We were all talking about this cash pad technology and I buy in at 11 or 12 bucks. And within a week, it's at 19. <laughs> so I'm thinking the same thing of myself. I was like, wow, you are a really good listener. And you just absolutely crushed it. And then came out this little whisper report that said, well, that report might not have been accurate. And so all of a sudden, the stock 
drops to 14 and gets halted, I can't even sell it. Yeah. It opens up six weeks later at 98 cents. Six weeks later. Ouch. They halted it because they had to investigate yeah. that and it wasn't as easy to find out if there was real fraud. Now, six weeks later, they opened the stock back up and it was 98 cents. Yeah. I remember that it did like a bunch of reverse 10, 10 to one reverses. Yeah. And I still was left with a seven cent stock. Yeah. And I don't think I ever sold it just because <laughs> I wouldn't. I was just like, I'm not, I'm, I refuse. Like eventually it will go out of business and then I can take my loss. Yeah, that, that's but amazing. That's what happens. And that's what happens, you know, when you get away from fundamentals, whether it's real estate or stock, when you get away from fundamentals and it becomes a fever pitch, then all of a sudden fundamentals don't largely matter at that time. Momentum does. Yeah. But you better pray that fundamentals never matter again, because that's the only way that that price can remain what it is. Yeah. Well, you know, Warren Buffett has a lot of great sayings and I think he has one that goes like the stocks every now and again could be a popularity contest, which GameStop AMC were, but over time they will all be weighing machines and weighing machines are discounted ca future cash flow. That's right. It's really that's that right. simple. Um, He's hundred percent right. And that's, and that's the risk that there is, you know, yeah. and I think you could spend a lot more time, you know, obviously I made my money in real estate. I lost some money in the market. I made some money in the market, but I really like real estate because it's the tortoise or hare. I'll take the tortoise all day long. I look at my portfolio now 20 years old and seasoned mm. and most things getting more and more seasoned. And I don't have to worry about what the next hot thing is. If I never bought another piece of real estate again, I could retire and not ever have to think about it again. And that's the position that we want to put people. However, if you like your job, stay in your job, keep working your job and continue to add to that list. And that way, when you go to retire, you're going to have whatever you need for your family to live, however you want to live. And that's the value of real estate. Yeah. The people I really feel bad for, and again, this is my personal experience is the people that came out of the gate because of this pandemic and they used to be sports betters. And then they went to the stock market Ay, Yes. and they won. Yep. That's like a, that's like a gambler winning the first time they go to Vegas. That's right. They That's think right. they think they're special. They think they have the Midas touch and you're going to eventually and probably very quickly lose it all and then yep. some. Well, I mean you saw what happened too with different trading platforms literally shutting down or limiting your ability to sell yeah. or limiting your ability to buy to cover yourself. Yeah. Like that's a real problem. And you know what, guys? And it's not to say that doesn't happen in real estate too. It does. There were times when the bank all of a sudden said, no more 10% down payments. Everything is 35%. Yeah, you're right. No longer 700 credit scores. We want 760 credit scores, which we know is like less than 5% of the market. Yeah. And so all of that stuff happens and capital requirements, instead of it needing three months, now you need nine months capital requirements. You know, all of these things that they can introduce to slow the flow. And that way they're only getting into the absolute tippity top, safe, safe, safest deals. Mm -hmm. And they can do that. And you know what, unless you're in that position, which 95% of us are not, yeah. it's just something to be aware of. You know, when, when it looks like things are going a little bit sideways, all of these entities are in position to change the rules of the game. Yeah. This is a piece of advice I have for everybody because of Reddit, Robinhood. I've been thinking about how to have this conversation. Yeah. What I would tell you is if, if you are in a stock, that ever becomes, uh, if you go to CNBC and they have that little window in the bottom right, if you ever see an individual stock there, price go up like every five minutes as they rotate, that is a very, 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 very good sign that that is a momentum stock and you better get the hell out. Yeah. Yep. Right. Or at least put a stop loss in. Oh, something. Yeah. Because something. I remember when they were putting GameStop there, it was just going up and up and up. I'm like, oh my God, these freaking poor kids are going to get smoked. Wait. And I called it, I mean, people can go back and watch my daily financial news. I told them this was going to happen because I've been yep. doing this for a long time. Sure. You caught Wall Street sleeping. Congratulations. Yep. You kicked the teeth in on two hedge, billion dollar hedge funds. Nice yep. job. What happened is all the other freaking Wall Street sharks were like, ooh, blood in the water. I'm mm -hmm. going to get off the short side. I'm going to come to the buy side and I'm going to run this stock. That's run right. it. So they took it from like 200 to over 400. That's right. And then Almost they're like, five. yeah. And they're like, yeah. I think I got them. Yeah. So they, they, bit, they got a bite, right? Cause they were buying in the twos and threes and all the way up. Mm -hmm. And then they started shorting and mm -hmm. you can look at the flows wall street in totality rung. They ran the retail investor. They did in totality did. billions of dollars. Retail investors have lost in totality. Yes. Congratulations, you took out two hedge funds. 
hedge funds got you in totality. That's right. And at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's just like anything, you know, you can appreciate that you can get somebody on something, Mm -hmm. you know, people, people like smart. They don't like clever. Yeah. Yeah. And wall street, there's a reason that they're all there. There's a reason that, you know, a lot of those guys have hundreds of millions of dollars a year in compensation. They know exactly what they're doing and all they need to do is see exactly what's occurring and then pivot. And if they yeah. pivot, they are going to move fast on anybody that can't pivot as fast. It's it's like a it's like playing, I mean, football or any kind of sport. It's really football, maybe basketball a little bit. Wall Street folks are paying to buy the game film and buy your playbook. Mm-hmm. Occasionally, you run a new play they've never seen. And they're That's like, right. shit, I didn't see that before. <laughs> then they put it in the book. Yeah. They set up all the little metrics and they do this lightning fast. We're talking hours. It That's was right. probably solved over the weekend. It's like, That's oh. Right insert that playbook, watch this, look the alerts. You're not going to get them again, at least not on that play. Sure. So what do you think happens if you are the offense and you know exactly what the defense is going to run? You call the play that is most advantageous to, if you're going to blitz what they call a, you know, screen in the flat you know, mm-hmm. or a go route because you have the fastest receiver on single cover, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Dude, you, you can't, you're, you're, you can't get them. And then again, I really got to tell you, if you ever see an individual stock just being run and CNBC takes the time to put it in their little feed, get That's right. out. Yeah. I mean, I'm a silver guy. Yeah. So, I, you know, when they were talking about doing the same thing to silver, I was like, it doesn't make me a buyer or a seller. It still makes me a holder. Yeah. So I've been a long-term holder. It's just now, what physical I, or the ETF or both physical, not ETF. I hate paper physical. ET physical. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, at the end of the day, that ETF, it's just paper. It's only paper. I want, I want physical. I like physical assets because you want to talk about the wealth gap. It's assets versus not assets. That's the argument. It's nothing else. It's mm-hmm. not about wages. It's about assets. Yeah. That's really what it's about. So you have assets that over time, they continue to increase over time. If you don't have assets, they can't increase over time. There Just that go. simple. The last thing I want to mention in this standpoint is I, I want people to hear me here. Robinhood and Facebook are not your friends. Robinhood, if you don't know, sells the order flow to Wall Street. It is now in their playbook. Robinhood's not your friend. Yes, you have $0 trades. Yes, they have gamification. Yes, their app is sexy and it makes it like you're winning. They're not your friend. They're not your friend. Stop thinking they're your friend. Yeah, I think that's what makes the message scary is democratization of the stock market. Yeah. It's just like anything, Mike, you got to do your homework, do your homework and understand exactly what you're doing, what you're getting into. And quite frankly, never put any amount in that you're not able to lose. Yeah. Very cool. Well, dude, these were a great three episodes, Matt. I appreciate your time. You have a wonderful week. All right. Absolutely. Mike. Thanks so much. Thanks to you and the entire viewing team of uh, one rental at a time. Looking forward to next week as well. You got it, buddy. Bye. Thanks.